at that. They're all fighting their reflections there. <laughs> Good morning from Lake Butler. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> had a nice night out there by the uh, city hall. It wasn't uh, dewy at all, so that's nice. Not having to pack up the tarp all wet. And then I went over there to the uh, market um, to get breakfast. Everyone's, ni everyone's nice around here, so that's very nice. <laughs> all right, Lake Sampson is what I was trying to remember yesterday. That's where I'm heading today. I got one... Uh, one map that says 14.8 miles, and another one says 13. So let's see what uh, <laughs> let's see which one's right, huh? That's a big difference, isn't it? Yes, yeah, another cemetery, but something different about this. It's actually two cemeteries, two competing cemeteries. You got Cruz. Let me get on the other side here. You've got um, Cruz Cemetery, presumably right here. And then you got Whitehead Cemetery, just on the other side there. Huh. So, uh, navigating uh, all this trip, I've been pretty much using an app. I think I've told you this before. I've been using an app called Gaia GPS. Um, however, when I was going through uh, Western Ohio, uh, I was using an app called Gut Hook. Gut Hooks because uh, the Buckeye Trail, I was basically on the Buckeye Trail for that portion. and. Um, Gut Hook is a company that makes a bunch of trail guides, so I was using the app for that. And then here on the Florida Trail, same thing, I'm using an app called uh, Gut Hook. But the reason I'm telling, telling you this is because um, uh, the app has the ability for uh, hikers to put in notes about the uh, different waypoints. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a waypoint coming up in about a mile. <laughs> Let me show it to you. <laughs> uh, I mean, mo <laughs> most of the uh, comments that you get on the um, <laughs> on the different points, they're all pretty fact-based, you know, like good camp spot, uh, nice people, etc., etc. But this one just kind of struck me. I guess uh, this person had uh, uh, a lot of time to think. <laughs> And here's another one. But instead of it being bush light, it's just plain old bush. So I think I'm going to make a judgment call here and that uh, bush beer is going to be the uh, other bookend to this journey. Upper Peninsula, Michigan, and now Florida. Now, this is more my cup of tea. Yes, it is. Even though it's cloudy today, it's uh, warming up nicely. I think it's supposed to be 68. Um, doesn't feel too humid. In fact, this morning, there was no dew on the tent. I mentioned that, didn't I? Um, the next few days, I think the temperature is going to go up and down, up and down. But uh, no rain in the forecast for another, oh, I think nine days, so that's, that's encouraging. It's really been interesting on this trip to 
go through all this corporate owned forest land from Michigan on down uh, here into Florida and of course uh, mostly through Georgia as well and, and parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. Now uh, this uh, forest service here on either side of the trail is owned by what, Rayonier, Rayonier Corporation. You know we've passed um, forest uh, owned by uh, Weyerhaeuser and Plum Creek and uh, a whole bunch of other different uh, corporate entities. As I mentioned in a, oh, a good number of um, videos back, you know, these trees, these are all your uh, pieces of paper, your furniture, your uh, all your paper and wood products that you use. This is uh, what goes into it. You know anything about Rayonier? About that corporation? I haven't ever heard of that until I came uh, here into Florida. It's really interesting on this part of the trail here how dry it's been. Um, in looking at the trail comments, there have been instances of where people have said, ah, eh, there's a swamp here, you can get water out of it, there's a stream here, it's flowing this many inches deep, and so on and so forth. But as you can see, well, maybe as you can't see, from the outset with all the greenery, it looks like, oh, it's a lush wonderland with tons of water, but uh, there's no water to be found here anywhere. I suppose if you dug a you dug a little hole, maybe uh, 12, 18 inches deep, you'd find some, but um, this has been a dry section here. Well, this day has gone by remarkably quickly. Uh, my map says I'm four tenths of a mile to where I'm going to camp. But uh, it does look like it's pretty tough though. It says that um, between now and the campsite, there is a seven foot descent in elevation and then a 10 foot climb. So uh, this next four tenths is probably gonna be pretty tough. Probably gonna take me at least a half hour to go up those 10 feet, you know? Uh, <laughs> well, here's the uh, camping spot. It's pretty nice looking, isn't it? Now I'm trying to decide if I want to stay here. <laughs> now that I found a nice spot. Yeah, you find a nice spot, you're gonna get it. You're gonna go, huh? Uh, but it's 3:15, and. Um, the next place I could theoretically go is to the park over in Hampton. And that's just about two hours. So it'd get me there about a half hour before sundown. And the benefit to that is that I could probably just hang out underneath the picnic pavilion there and not have to string up the hammock or anything like that. So that then in the morning I could just get the sleeping bag all picked up, packed away, and head on out. Um, however, then of course, I'm getting there about dark, so, uh, but then again, getting there at dark, big deal. You know, I, it's a picnic pavilion. Right here, I could take my own sweet time, just uh, picking the nicest uh, spot. Have a leisurely dinner of Triscuits and Cheese Whiz and nuts. <laughs> But I only have a liter of water, so I have to go get some water out of the swamp over there. Huh. Well, what do you think I should do? Stay or go? The more I look at this, the better and better it looks, that's for sure. What do you think I should do? Let me know in the comments down below.
Hmm. Could hang them right there, huh? And here's the answer to what I ended up doing. A park. And another baseball dugout. How about that? <laughs> I was going to sleep under there, but I figured it was too wide open. People would see me. And so I, I saw this and I said, eh, what better thing than a uh, baseball dugout? After all, baseball dugouts and I have been friends this, this uh, trip, haven't we? Anyway, so, uh, and I'm also getting uh, starting to get an early start, so how about that? And it looks like today's mileage is going to be, well, of course it's going to be less. So the reason I did this, came the uh, extra five miles, is because um, <clears throat> today was going to be a 16-mile um, day, I believe. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I was going to go sleep in another park tonight. Uh, but I figured that then tomorrow, which I had planned for 19 miles, um, would be a little bit too long, especially given that I'm carrying a fresh load of six and a half days of, of resupply. So I decided to come this extra five miles so that today I can go an extra five miles or four miles or three miles, split the difference, and then make tomorrow um, not 19, but make it 14 or 15 or 16. Yeah, because uh, adding another 12 pounds of food today is going <laughs> to make it a little bit more uh, strenuous, even though it's flat. But All right, so uh, let's get on the uh, move here. I'm sure you've probably heard of uh, wild pigs, feral hogs um, in the south wreaking havoc, and uh, I haven't come across any until today. There's a couple of them right up here in front of me, uh, but I th it looks like they've been shot. Um, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon how those uh, these wild pigs are just um, wreaking havoc along the land here. There's a guy right there. Um, and, you know, it's open season any time, and every time you see one, you can just uh, shoot it dead. I don't even think you need a permit or anything like that. You know, coming across on this Florida trail, and even uh, coming across here in, uh, as I've entered northern Florida, it's kind of, um, I guess what I envision what the uh, quote-unquote old Florida is like, or was like. And what I mean by that, I, you've probably heard the term old Florida, is that uh, Florida the way it was before people started streaming in and moving here. Um, when you're thinking of Florida today, you're probably thinking of maybe Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, those places, what is that? They call that the Sun Coast, the Gold Coast, whatever. Probably thinking of Orlando and with Disney World and all the attractions there and all the buildup that's gone there. But there's really the old Florida that I've uh, heard about from the past where you've just got this uh, really laid back lifestyle. Um, and, you know, I, I got that in Georgia as well. But this just seems to be an even, I don't know, an even more laid back lifestyle around here. It's just a feeling about it. I don't know. But I have found that it, it is these, uh, out of the way places that I've been to that have had the most attraction as opposed to the uh, city type of places. 
simply because I guess I'm from the city, so to speak, suburbia. And uh, I've had my uh, fill of uh, <laughs> the noise and the coming and going and the hustle and bustle in life. So uh, I guess I'm liking the, I like these rural areas and these uh, big wide open spaces in the west just because of the quiet of it all, huh? But uh, this, this part of Florida has been very nice as well, and I've got a, I guess, what, another week and a half of it before I get into the Orlando area. Uh, a little interesting tidbit. I, I didn't show you anything about Hampton, where I stayed last night there in the park, except maybe I showed that little, that little uh, piece of park in the background. Um, <laughs> but uh, Hampton, uh, Florida was considered the most corrupt city in America. It's just a small city, like 500 people, a little bit less than 500 people. Um, but back in, uh, in the early 2000s, so Hampton just a, is uh, just a little square of a city. But back in the early 2000s, or maybe a little bit before that, uh, the city annexed uh, 1,260 feet of U.S. Highway 301 that runs, that didn't even run through the city, but um, the city from its little square annexed a little finger that, that jutted out to uh, U.S. 301. <laughs> and uh, you know why they did that? Yeah, so they can uh, start writing uh, traffic tickets. And so uh, that 1,260 feet of US 301 uh, became known as uh, a speed trap. And in fact, the city at one time earned almost a quarter million dollars off of uh, traffic tickets. And uh, at one point in time, uh, not, you know, not too... Uh, long ago, like in 2010 or so, the city had, <laughs> it had one police officer for every 25 people. <laughs> anyway, uh, the reason it was called the most corrupt city in America, not because of that, but probably partly because of that, is that uh, there's a lot of corruption and uh, pilfering of the city money going on and nepotism. The mayor was caught uh, selling uh, drugs, so uh, the city was uh, pretty much uh, close to losing its charter at being able to um, uh, govern itself. But in 2014, the uh, I guess the uh, state of Florida gave it a last-minute reprieve. So I think it's uh, still officially city and still um, has its own. Uh, city council, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. Oh, and so as a result of all that, back in 2014, besides reforms, um, the state made uh, Hampton to unannex uh, that part of uh, US 301 and to disband its. Um, Police department, so I guess the uh, police services are now um, handled by the county sheriff there. So interesting things, you know. And that goes back, I guess, to all these rural areas, is that you probably do find uh, some of that going on in lots of rural communities in America. And I suppose you find it in the cities too, you know. You hear about corruption in the big cities and and all that. Um, but, you know, just like uh, with any cross-section of the population in America, and just like any cross-section of government or industry or whatever, there's the good and there's the bad, and the good, oh, and the good uh, definitely overshadows the bad, so, and I think, uh, thinking back into Georgia, and the first-hand experience I had 
with the few uh, um, sheriffs that I came across, and especially uh, Dep uh, Sheriff uh, Sergeant Anglin back there. Um, I think, by and large, everyone is uh, everyone's good and trying to do the right thing. Well, I uh, split off from the uh, Florida Trail just about uh, 150 yards back there because um, I'm going into town, Keystone Heights, to get my resupply. The Florida Trail makes jog up north uh, between some lakes and then I'll eventually uh, hit back on it, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, but what I also wanted to say is about walking on this trail. In this section here, the Florida Trail has been sharing uh, with the uh, Palat, uh, the Lake Butler to Palatka Trail, which is an old, I, I told you this before, an old abandoned uh, Norfolk Southern uh, rail line. But the thing about walking through <coughs> in these trails is that um, you know, time flies uh, so much just being in the uh, peacefulness of it instead of being on the roads, you know. And since time flies so uh, so much, it's like the miles just zoom by. I've uh, been going for two hours right now straight without a break, and uh, it only seems like it's been maybe half hour at the most. And... Uh, <laughs> I only have a little over six miles for the rest of my day, as I had planned, um, which would make me get in there right around uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so I guess I'll be going further today. Um, but let's see what Keystone Heights has in store for us here. It looks like a little bit larger town. Um, and there's supposedly a lot of uh, options for food and groceries and stuff. So let's let's see what Keystone Heights looks like. Look, I had a little guy come out and greet me. Yeah, hello there. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> they have a nice little swimming hole here too. Can you see this? Pretty nice. And again, this is what. Old Florida, what I think of when I hear of Old Florida. All right, see you later, little guy. Bye-bye. See you later. Huh. Well, the weather's changed a bit. I stopped here in Keystone Heights to uh, get breakfast slash lunch, brunch, <laughs> and uh, charged up my uh, phone and battery and then I went over there to the supermarket, got my resupply and I think I bought too much, oh well, guess better to have more than less, right? Um, so anyway, Keystone Heights, uh, it's kind of spread out, and I'm going to be walking through this tree tunnel, so I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to see. Uh, Keystone Heights was started back in uh, the, what, early 1920s? Um, some guys came in, and, or people started coming here just because of the lakes and everything like that. And then uh, some guy came here and organized the place, laid out streets and all that. There was a natural feature here, I forget now what, they, what it's called, that uh, was used kind of like as a natural amphitheater. Uh, eventually, uh, they built an inn around here, and uh, people started coming here as like a little touristy type of spot, uh, vacation type of spot, because of all the lakes. And there's also Lake Geneva up ahead which I guess is considered part of this Keystone Heights area. 
Uh, but anyway, people, people from like uh, Jacksonville, Gainesville would come over here. And then uh, during the war, uh, World War II, there were some uh, military bases around, so the uh, service uh, personnel would come here along with their families. And uh, people just kept uh, coming in little by little by little. Uh, the inn eventually uh, burned down in, what, 1954? But by then, there was still, there was enough stuff going on that uh, it didn't kill off the town. And so, um, today it continues on. And I guess the one thing that helps is that uh, Florida Highway 100 runs right through here. And, uh, oh, also too, since this is a railroad line, there were uh, up to eight trains a day uh, running through here at one point in time, so that, that helped out as well. All right, so Keystone Heights, Florida. And now, I think I'm basically gonna be, after tomorrow, uh, going through uh, the Ocala National Forest and other rural type of uh, areas. So let's see what that's like. It really has cooled off here. It's early. <clears throat> How about that? I got an early start. 7.23 this morning. Yay! <laughs> but I do have to do 19 miles. And um, 19 miles with this heavy load of stuff. I bought way too much. <laughs> I'm going to have way more food left over at the end of this leg. Oh well. Maybe I'll feed the animals or something, huh? Or feed, feed some uh, poor starving hiker that I, that I meet on the way here. The reason I'm uh, wanting to do this 19 miles here today is because uh, there is a trail shelter so I'll have a little roof over my head to stay out of the dew um, but if I don't make it then I'll just bed down somewhere but uh, positive thoughts right Rice Creek Conservation Area I think is the place where we're going Well, don't blink. This is the little community of Flora Home. When I mean little, it's little. Uh, Flora Home um, was an area that started up in the late 1800s when uh, marshland around here was being drained uh, to make way for agriculture. And It was named, it's named Flora Home because people would be coming from Palatka, 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 which is about 15 miles that way. They'd come out this way and they're, they're saying that uh, they're going to go visit Flora's home. Uh, Flora Ciprel, I think her name was. And so the name eventually just got shortened to Flora, Flora Home. So it was an agricultural area. It's it built up with uh, crops and all that sort of stuff. The train came through here and um, there's a train depot which then eventually burned down in 1923. A park was built, a Palmetto Park right here. Uh, <clears throat> after the depot um, burned down, the train stopped, didn't, didn't stop here anymore, simply because the highway was now coming through here. So eventually um, some businesses uh, popped up to um, cater to the people that were driving. Uh, a gas station, things like that. Packing house was here, uh, general store, blacksmith. Um, and so to this day, you know, Floor Home is just a little rural community. A lot of people just pass through here right now. This is Florida 100. Here's something a little bit change of pace. Little footbridge came off the um, 
bike trail here and across McKinney's walkway <laughs> Little map showing where we're going. This normally would be a full swamp, but it's been pretty dry, as I mentioned uh, previously, this whole section. So it makes it easy. So now the trick is just to pass across the busy road here. Don't get run over by the log trucks. And then into that. So now from paved bike trail, Across the road, and now into the jungle. All right, and I've made some pretty good time. It's only uh, just about 3:30, and I've only got about a mile and a half left. But I'll tell you, um, what 17 and a half miles on pavement like that, asphalt, uh, is pretty hard. <laughs> With an extra heavy pack, it's pretty hard on the knees and the feet. Uh, although there were uh, probably a third of that I could, I was able to walk on the side of the uh, asphalt on the uh, margin of the trail. So, um, but still, this is kind of nice. In the jungle. Rice Creek Conservation Area. Now this would always uh, normally be all wet, but um, I haven't got my feet wet yet uh, this trip, except I think once in Michigan. Can you hear the, uh, you can't hear them physically, but can in your mind you hear the uh, Jungle birds, all the uh, songs in the jungle. <laughs> and what do you know? A mailbox. Let's see if there's any checks in it. No, no checks. Well, let's see what kind of mail we have here. Oh, look at this. It's a trail register. <laughs> Thought I was stealing the mail, did you? Let's, uh, let's brag to everybody what we're doing here, huh? <laughs> okay, there. I put my brag on it. Let's put it back. Looks like somebody was here last night. And... I don't see any uh, names in it Oops, come on. after those people left, so maybe I do have it all myself, yeah. All right, blue blaze, orange blaze, blue blaze, orange blaze. I think it go this way. Follow those orange blazes. This is uh, interesting how cool it is. It's probably uh, 50 degrees right now. And how dry the air is too. And, oops, <laughs> pay attention. And I wonder how little rain it takes just to muck this trail up here, you know?
teeter totter. There was something I was thinking about the other day that was similar about um, this end of the trip. Oh, the the, the beer cans. Uh, as to the beginning. But uh, this is similar too. If you might recall, I think if I got a clip here, you might recall I went through I went on one of the uh, some some of these planks here on Isle Royale on the uh, second video out. So uh, wonder what other kinds of similarities I'll have here. You know, beginning to end, yet uh, totally different uh, kind of places. Well, big surprise. <laughs> I uh, was coming up the trail here and I looked ahead and I said, what? It's uh, another backpacker. First, uh, besides on Isle Royale, it's the first backpacker I've seen. Uh, oh, and also up there at the trail shelter on the uh, AT. It's the first uh, backpacker I've seen on the whole trip. So uh, we traded information. Uh, he told me um, uh, the conditions up ahead in uh, around o Okeechobee and where to resupply and things like that. So it's Braden. So Braden, if you're watching, thanks for the info and uh, good luck on your trek there. And uh, yeah, it's really. I guess I'm gonna. I guess I'll see some more people because this is the season when people do it, and they're usually doing northbound. I'm doing southbound, so. All right, and nobody's at the shelter. All right, hurry up and get there. And here it is. I think they unofficially call this the Rice Creek Hilton. <laughs> There's a uh, trap door to get in the sleeping area and this would be the eating area I guess I can leave my pack down here too I hear there's a bunch of raccoons around here that uh, will rip off anything you leave out so yeah there it is look at that Rice Creek Hilton so oh there's another mailbox guess I'll have to leave another message um, Okay, well, let's go see what it looks like, huh? All right. Nice little picnic table. All screened in. Skeleton pot. Well, if I had something to cook. <laughs> I had some matches. All right, let's take a look at. Uh, oh, here, look at this. Here's the rules. Sleep 12, share. Wonder if any, if I'll have any of my closest friends come tonight. <laughs> All right, let's see what it looks like upstairs here. Pretty nice. Got some nice mats here. Yeah, okay. All right. Home for the night. Oops. Maybe I should spend a couple nights here. Ah, uh, do you see what I see? Uh-huh. What kind of goodies do we have in here? 